Welcome to today's tutorial and today we're going to be looking at using stepper motors but without using micro delay. Now stepper motors especially for me building model railways are an incredible tool they are very accurate when it comes to moving things to certain positions so they're ideal for turntables traverses and various other animations they're also extremely strong they're a lot more powerful than most conventional servos that you get involved with so it means you can move heavier loads which especially when you're trying to move things like a traverser especially a fiddle yard traverser where you're moving a lot of weight then they come into their own now one of the issues uh, with the stepper motor code that people tend to use is it uses micro delay and this can have some problems when you're trying to do DCC uh, controls because you need your program to be able to be constantly reading from the DCC track signal and of course if you've got delay or micro delay the whole system's locked up so what we're going to do today is look at some code that gets around that problem as usual all the code is available on the digital town website you can see the link right in front of you and it'll be below the video but let's get on to the um, the code and start looking at it so this is the example sketch that tends to come with the stepper motor and if we just whiz through it just so we know what's going on we've got a direction pin a step pin uh, sometimes there is the enable pin uh, the enable pin allows you to turn the stepper motors off now on a traverser i've done recently um, as in a horizontal traverser i can turn the power off um, because it's on threaded rods so it can't get knocked either way if you're doing a turntable or as i've done recently a vertical traverse for someone you'll struggle turning the power off because it's very easy then to knock the stepper and it to lose its current indexed position so in this example i'm not using the enable pin now we've got a steps per revolution this one's got 500 in for some reason pin modes obviously the step pin and the direction pin become outputs and then what we're doing in the loop is we're going round 500 steps and what it does is it writes the step pin first of all we set the direction then we're going step pin so the pin goes high we wait 500 microseconds we write the pin low we wait 500 microseconds and of course this is going to go around in a loop 500 times so it's going to do sort of 500 odd steps and then although i tend to call this a thousand steps because it's doing a step here and a step here some people call that one step for me that's two steps but we're not going to fight on that one then what the sketch does is it waits a second and it does the whole thing but this time setting the direction pin low now the issue with this code and it works providing you can get the delays all correct but what happens here is if you can imagine the way the code is written it's writing something then you're using delay microseconds now if you see my tutorial on state machines and various other things like that this is what we call blocking code so whenever you see delay microseconds or its big brother delay what that basically does is it stops the arduino doing anything else the thing is just parked there waiting and you can't control inputs from buttons or anything else now in certain circumstances that's not a problem if the arduino is only controlling one item so for instance in the traverser that i've done recently the um, traverser board only has a traverser on it there's no lights there's nothing else so i don't have to worry about anything else but on a previous uh, job i did 
Um, there was a traverser and there are points to be controlled and there's buttons and there's various other things that need to be read. So it needs to be able to receive signals at all time. So this is your standard uh, stepper code, but if it's running, the Arduino can't do anything else. Now, the trouble when you start to step out of using delay is you need some kind of timing mechanism. Now, in my sketches, I've started to use uh, current micros and current millis, and I've been putting them as a, uh, a variable that is available to the whole program. In a lot of my sketches, I'm constantly trying to check on the time in milliseconds. So rather than calling millis a number of times, I just call them once at the beginning of the main loop and it can then be used throughout the program. Now, going back to our previous sketch, if you remember, we had a, um, a timing for the steps. And again, we're going to use 500 microseconds, which is the same as using delay micro. Now again, pin modes, it's all set up just the same. This is how the code works though. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to check the time. So if you can imagine we've got the loop, the code is whizzing round and round. The processor can be doing lots of different jobs and what it's doing is it's looking, it's checking the time constantly to see if the current time in microseconds has got to a point where when you subtract the step time in micros, it's greater than the delay. So when this minus this equals 500, it's going to make a step. Now, the code I've used here, one of the issues you've always got is keeping track of which direction the next step should be. So if we go back to our previous version, we've got di digital right step pin high weight then step pin low now here because we're going round in a loop we've got to keep track of what the last step was so i've used an unusual method in the next step is a boolean now that is a very odd sort of data type you've got bytes which store um, just eight little bits it's a I think it's up to was it up to zero to two five five then you've got integers which are much bigger I forget the exact number I think it's up to about thirty two thousand you've got unsigned longs which are huge but a boolean only has two values it is either true or false so basically zero or one so here we've got this weird bit of code where it says that the next step is not equal to next step. You might take some getting your head around that, but what it's actually saying is for the next step, let's think back to our previous sketch, we're high or low, which translated into numbers is one or zero. So what it's saying is if the value of next step was say one, I don't want it to be equal to one. Well, it only has two options. So now it becomes zero. When it goes around the next time, it's zero. I don't want it to be zero. So its other option is one. So it's swapping the direction and that is how it is driving the step pin. Very, very simple piece of code and uh, it just it looks elegant. Then what we do, this line here, is we now make sure that step micros, which is this value, is now equal to current micros, this value, so that when it goes through the system again, it knows when to um, do take its next step. Now, for this code, what I thought I'd do is instead of it just, you know, plodding on aimlessly doing that bit of code, we're actually using two timers at the same time. We're also using current millis. And what I'm doing here is I've set up another unsigned long, 
which is the direction changer. And what this is doing is every uh, two seconds, 2000 milliseconds, it's going to change direction. So just imagine this could also be a bit of code here that would be looking for a button press or something like that. I'm just using this just as an example to use. So what it's doing, current millis in milliseconds, it keeps checking to see if uh, the current time minus this value is greater than the direction time change. And when it does that, it's um, using a more traditional way of um, selecting a value. So I could have used this sort of idea again here. So I just wanted to show in this code a sort of the way that I would have done it you know, in the past. So what it does is if the current direction is greater than zero, make it zero. Otherwise, make it one. And then what it does is it writes to the direction pin to set the direction and then it starts the timer all over again so that it's going to change direction in two seconds time. Now this code was a bit unusual because it was using uh, a, t a time value to change direction. Normally we would count the number of steps because obviously if we've got a turntable or a traverser we don't care how long it takes we want to know exactly where it is so in this example when we come to the main loop again we've got the usual code but this time it's checking for a target so what I do is I create a variable called uh, where are we at? step target the number of steps that I want it to take and of course in your code you could change this to different values so what it's doing now is it's saying is the step count e um, equal if the step count is not equal to the step target then check if it's time for another step so this code we've seen before but what we're doing now is surrounding it by some code that keeps checking is it time you know do I need to take a step not just if it's time but are there steps to be taken so what it'll do then is if it hasn't reached the target it will run this bit of code and every time it takes a step step count gets incremented until of course these two become equal at which point this code will stop now again what I've done is I've got a timer down here and all it's doing is um, basically changing the direction at a certain point and also what I'm doing is changing the step target value so each time it's incrementing it by a thousand until it gets to ten thousand in um, which case it goes back. So in this example, as we can see, not only can we change the direction, but we can also change the number of steps that we want to move at any particular time. So in my traverser code, the step target and the step direction is worked out by the DCC signal coming in. Uh, I read which um, accessory decoder value is being sent and from that I give it a particular location and work out the direction and the number of steps that need to be taken to get there. Now going down into this um, next sketch it's basically exactly the same as this sketch. The problem is and this is just about how you keep your code tidy if you write all of this stuff in the main loop and you've got a ton of other stuff let's be honest your main loop gets to the point where it starts to become unreadable you just can't find various bits so what I do is I break it down into functions so what we've done here if we now go down to the main loop we've got current micros and current millis because those could be used in various other places but I've now got a function called step control 
and a function called steps direction. If we go to step control, it's basically that very simple bit that's telling the stepper what to do with its next step if it hasn't accomplished uh, getting to the target that it's supposed to. Then we've got another function, steps direction, which again is the second half of what was in the main loop uh, that is running separately. Now the advantage of this sort of code is that if later you wanted to add in some buttons that set the step count or whatever, this function can remain exactly the same and all you'd be doing is changing this bit of code or you could be even leaving this bit of code and adding another function within here but it just keeps your code a lot cleaner so that's just a little bit of advice for you now the final sketch that I've included is a bit of an odd one anyone who's used stepper motors <laughs> you tend to find that there are certain values that they don't run particularly well at and when I say certain values what we're talking about here is the um, the step delay. If you could have the delay too short, sometimes the stepper motor just doesn't seem to be able to react right. Um, sometimes if the steps are too slow, you don't get a smooth movement. You get sort of more of a jogging along type mo thing. If you want it to move really slowly, smoothly, what I'd advise you to do is sort of go down to half step, quarter step, or eighth step, or even sixteenth of a step. Just remember that as you change those values, your torque values also change. But as we look at this bit of code, all it's doing is every uh, so often it is changing the value of the step delay and it's starting at a really low value and it's incrementing by 30 microseconds. If you run this sketch, what it will do is you will see the um, stepper motor slowly increasing in power. And if you watch on the serial monitor, it will actually start to print out the current speed that it's set at. One of the things you notice when a stepper motor is running right it sounds right it doesn't have a lot of vibe you know it's, it's a smooth movement so if you want to tune your stepper motor this is a useful little sketch just to get the thing tuned up so uh, i hope that is useful for you so yeah i hope it is useful to you and if it is you know get it in your model railways i'd love to see what you're doing Thanks again for watching and again, you know, if it's useful to you, please click the like and subscribe and don't forget there's all the code available on the Digital Town website. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.